Hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight, our topic of conversation is currents and voltages together, electric power. In the previous video, we introduced TCT electric circuit theory as a language. Then we presented the first three words in the vocabulary, charge Q, current I, and voltage V. Even with their units, Coulombs per second, amps, voltage in joules per coulomb of volts. More recently, we presented voltage as an electric height. It is high time that we combine those two protagonists in this movie. Charge flows and electric height, that is to combine currents and voltages. Consider an electric field E. Inside that field, imagine there is this hypothetical mountain on which there are two points A and B, and B is 3 volts higher than A. That is, B is 3 joules per coulomb higher than A. So, every coulomb that climbs up from A to B gains 3 joules of energy, and every coulomb that rolls downhill from B to A loses 3 joules. To climb from A to B, there has to be a source of energy in the charges path and that is pushing those charges uphill. That source gives 3 joules to every coulomb that it moves up from A to B. Now, consider there is a current of 5 amps flowing uphill from A to B. That means that every second the source in that current path has to provide energy for 5 coulombs climbing up. And we know that the source has to give 3 joules to each one path between A and B is delivering 5 times 3 joules every second. That is 15 joules per second. But joules per second is watts. So, if there is a current Climbing up from A to B, there has to be a source in the current path delivering 15 watts of power. Voltage difference between A and B multiplied by current is power. Do units match? Let's see. Joules per coulomb multiplied by coulombs per second. That is joules per second. That is watts. Yes, units do check. Voltage times current is power. VIP. What if the current is flowing downhill? What if the current is coming down from B to A? In that case, instead of a source in the current path between A and B, there has to be something that is absorbing 3 joules from every coulomb rolling downhill. That something is absorbing 3 times 5, 15 watts of power. Again, voltage times current is power, VIP. If the current goes uphill, there is something, a source, delivering that power in that path. But if the current flows downhill, the something is absorbing power. Conclusion 1. If a current flows from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, it is because there is a source of energy in the path that is delivering power to the electric charges. That source is delivering energy at a power rate of VIP. The higher the climb, the more coulombs per second, the more power. Conclusion 2. If the current is flowing downhill from high to a lower voltage, in that case there is something, there is a device in the trajectory that is absorbing power from the moving charges. That device is absorbing energy at a power rate of VIP. The higher the drop, the more coulombs per second, the more power that device is absorbing. Summary. If coulombs arrive rich in energy and leave uh, poor in energy, it is because the element in the path, that uh, box, is absorbing power. How much power? V times I, remember? VIP. But if the coulombs arrive poor and leave the element box rich 
it's because the element is delivering power, delivering V times I watts. Time for a tutorial. In this circuit, all electric heights are given with respect to the reference, this one. If you don't know what a reference is, do watch the previous video in this series titled Voltages, the electric heights. This node is 5 volts higher than the reference one. This other node is 8 volts higher than the reference. This node here is 7 volts higher than the reference. It follows that this point in the circuit is higher than this one by 7 minus 5, 2 volts. That is, the voltage drop across this element here is 2 volts. Let me draw the plus and minus signs here to identify which end is higher. Higher by 2 volts. Currents are given in every element. Never mind what those elements are. We are yet to introduce formally those symbols and those elements, but we do not need to know that yet, not today. We need to find the power in each element and say also if the element is absorbing power or delivering power. To make matters simpler, I have identified every element with the ladder. Let's begin at the top. The left of A is 1 volt higher than the right of A. So, the 3 amps current is flowing from a higher point to a lower point. Coulombs arrive rich in the element A and leave poor. The element A is absorbing power. How much power? VIP. P of A is 1 volt times 3 amps. That is 3 watts that element is absorbing 3 watts. Let's work now on the power of this round element, F. The top of F is higher than the bottom by 11 minus 8, 3 volts. The current is flowing uphill, that is, Coulombs arrive poor and leave rich. F is delivering power. How much power? VIP, 3 volts, which is the voltage drop, times 3 amps, the current, is 9 watts. F delivers 9 watts of power. I invite you to complete this exercise in your own time. Observe that we didn't impose any time constancy constraint on either the voltage or the current. We didn't that is in English. The VIP formula is valid even if the voltage is a function of time or the current is a function of time or both are. In that case, power is also a function of time. VIP. Hmm. Which it is better in a tutorial? Through this element flows a current. It is a sinusoidal current. Yes, a cosine is also a sinusoidal wave. It's a current with a 3 amps amplitude, an angular frequency of 200 radians per second, and negative 30 degrees of phase shift. Let's plot it. That current is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. And that is, sometimes it flows from A to B, and some other times it flows from B to A. How am I going to know? Well, we use a convention. This arrow here tells us that when the curve is positive, the current flows like this. That's the convention. What about the voltage? Here's the voltage in that element. Another sinusoid. Different amplitude, 5 volts. Same frequency and different phase shift, 10 degrees. It looks like this. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. That is, sometimes A is higher than B, and sometimes A is lower than B. How do we know when? Another convention. These plus and minus signs tell us 
that when the curve is positive, this side A is higher than this other side B. A convention. Here we see both the current in red and the voltage in green in the element. Let's find out the power in that element. Multiply V times I. And let's plot all three curves, voltage in green, current in red, and power in gold. Observe that power in the element is not constant. Sometimes it's big, sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's negative. That is, that element is absorbing power sometimes and delivering power some of the times. Interesting, huh? We will revisit this a few lectures from now when we introduce AC systems. We said in the previous video that power is the time rate of absorption or production of energy. It is the derivative of energy. We also said that if we know the power as a function of time, which we know in our present case, it's VI, we can compute the absorbed or delivered energy by integration. There, the energy absorbed by the box element in the first 30 milliseconds is the integral of power from t equal to 0 to 0 0.03 seconds. To do that, let's use the HP50G. I have already typed the integral we want. Press eval to evaluate the integral and presto. The energy absorbed by the element in those first 30 milliseconds is 0 0.16 joules. This lecture on electric power would not be complete without a visit to the legacy of Bernard Telegan, a Dutch engineer and inventor, better known in electric circuit theory by its theorem. Telegan states, in a circuit, the total absorbed power is equal to the total delivered power. We write like this. If we move the right-hand side to the left, we embrace the convention to represent absorbed power as positive and delivered power as negative. If we change all signs, the convention is the opposite. In this course, we will use the first convention. We will consider absorbed power as positive. It's time for a tutorial. To compute the absorbed power in an element of an electric or electronic circuit, we assume that the current is dropping through the element from a higher point to a lower one, like this, origin to destination. Let's compute the drop the current experiences through the element. That would be that voltage. Voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination. And then we multiply that times the current. When we do that, we get the absorbed power in the element voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination times the current. Origin of whom? Destination of what? Of the current. Always the origin of the current and is the destination of the current. That is our formula to compute absorbed power through the element. Voltage of the origin of the current in that element minus voltage of the destination of the current in that element multiplied by the current itself. That is absorbed power. Hmm. But what if the origin is lower? Well, if the origin is lower, then V0 minus VD is going to be a negative number, and the P absorbed is going to be negative, which again follows our convention, negative absorbed power, which is delivery power. Tutorial time. In that circuit where we know all voltages with respect to a reference and all currents and all elements are identified, we want to compute power in each one of those elements. Let's compute P sub A, which we've already done. Absorbed power is what we want to compute. What is the absorbed power in every element in A? With that current would be voltage of the origin of the current, that would be 12 volts, minus voltage of the destination of the current, that would be 11, multiplied by the current, that is 3. 12 minus 11 times 3, that is 3 watts. That matches what we got before. The absorbed power in A is 3 watts. Let's do P sub B. Hmm for this current would be voltage of the origin of the current 12 minus voltage of the destination of the current 7 multiplied by 2. There you go. 12 minus 7 times 2 that is 10 watts. That element 
B is absorbing 10 watts. And then we compute, of course, C and D. D is interesting. Let's compute PD. And that would be voltage of the origin of the current in this element. The origin is this one, not this one. This point is not connected to that element. So in this element, the drop is from this point to this other point. So origin of the current is 0 volts minus uh, destination voltage 12 multiplied times 5. That is 0 minus 12 times 5. That is negative 60 watts. D is absorbing negative 60 watts of power, which is the same to say it is delivering 60 watts of power. I invite you to complete the computation with all the other elements. Once you have their all, so hmm, there is a typo here, F and F. Well, you fix that, please. So once you have them all, you can, of course, check that intelligence theorem matches. You add up all absorbed powers with their signs, and you should get a zero, which we do. And that's all. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again in our next video. And that is the end of this lecture on electrical and computer engineering. Thank you very much. Thank you.